Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix Online Meeting 216, July 22nd, last meeting of July. Wow, this one's gone by quick. Uh, as always, these meetings are recorded for those of you that are not with us right here, right now, and are watching it sometime in the future. Uh, what are we doing today? What are we doing today? We are doing uh, the same thing we are doing last week, two weeks ago, that is. Uh, we'll do a roll call. Hey, say hi. Jake has already said yes because we were chatting a little bit before the meeting. By the way, if you show up early, you get to talk about random things and just get to stay, um, you know, chill out and have fun, usually. All right, <laughs> we're gonna triage the new issues just like we did before. Uh, we have a few of them. We will have our design discussions talking, uh, talking about the topics that we wanna talk about. And then we will do our old issues. We're picking up on 5685, and then we'll do the usual questions and comments, things like that. So we're gonna kick it off with triage of the new stuff. Bob, are you ready? I am ready to triage new stuff. All right. So we're going to skip this first. No, wait. Um, nope. Old stuff came back. Oh, this is even older. Uh, I thought we talked about, no, we talked about mend last week. This is repair condition. Okay, I'm going to sit. You guys talk. Well, you scroll down my comment to reopen it for triage is do we want to do anything with this or should we just kill it I think the conclusion from live discussion and mail discussion is that the the mix of what happens with uh, the various condition attributes on packages is kind of confusing and repair condition as implemented just adds to the confusion. So um, I'm fine if we want to just not do anything with this. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Okay. Great. Let's let's just do that. Groovy. Um interesting. Four X, okay. Restart doesn't work when a non-elevated burn installer is launched on Windows Server 2019. Uh, Server 2019 is making it harder and harder to get restart. Which, you know, kind of makes sense, right? You don't want every random person to be able to reboot a server. Mm, I guess. Uh, this has come up in a couple of places. Last time we triaged it is 4X. That was last year, so I I don't disagree. Someone's got to step up and do the work. Yeah, it seems to be non-trivial since you have to coordinate with the elevated process to do it. Yeah, I mean it's going to be a small chunk of work. I mean it's not I don't know, it's not hard. It's just work. We have other things like this, right? Isn't there something that's kind of a one-off? Launch Elevate Xyz, I guess, is probably the closest thing. Where the UI says, hey, please go do this for me now. I so, guess. Yeah, I mean, I'm just trying to think if there's something like it. I think that's probably the closest there is to it. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, somebody needs to step in and say they're going to do it, right? Yeah, agreed. Um, I'll take it for research. Okay. Sounds good. I mean, probably should be marked whipped required. Yeah, I probably need whipped oh, yeah, required because yeah. we're going to need an, we have to jump the elevation boundary. Yep. AKA uh, security concerns. So, all right. Cool. Uh, and then bring it to 4 so we're got it in that world. If you're going to, because you're going to put it I'll look. Right. Yeah, I'll, I'll put it there. No. Right. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I'm. Sounds good. I'm, I will, in fact, anti-promise. <laughs> Understood. <laughs> All right. Burn does not repair an MSI when slips. This one we can this, skip. This one we can skip. All right, fine. New Actually, get Jacob asked, what oh. if it's a per-user bundle, or are we just going to handle that in the... Yeah, I, I mean, that's a, absolutely... So Jacob's point, if it's a per-user bundle and it isn't elevated, thank you, Sean. Um, the, yeah, you're going to run into a problem. I guess you'd have to say... Oh, you need a restart, and to do that, you're going to have to elevate. So the restart button's going to have to have an ele a shield on it, I guess. 
Yeah. We'll have to figure it out. Yeah. I, I'm just going to throw this out there. Like, I guess we could have a, a mo... No. I was going to say... So, I'm going to say a quick thing and why it's a bad idea when I thought about it. So, we could have a, a switch to burn that you could say restart now. Um, so, we'd be able to just launch burn with that switch elevated using the run as. Um, and then, I guess, would that be that bad? I guess it wouldn't be that bad. It's the same as calling shutdown.exe. Yeah, okay, be same as starting process on shutdown.exe. I guess that'd be another way of doing it. It's essentially like, yeah, maybe it could be done simpler by just saying, hey, run shutdown.exe with a run as, but at least then it would have your elevation prompt, like your signature information on the, the elevation prompt that comes up, right? Whatever your company name is and all that. Um, when you hit the elevation button to say, yeah, restart this. So that would one be one way of doing re per user uh, restart but, without having to do all of the handshake negotiation of starting up the server and all that is what I'm thinking. Oh, I see. Okay, but you're talking about this solely in the cons in the for per user bundles, right? For the per user bundles. Okay. With the shutdown, I said you're right. Well, we provide the reason details today, Jacob. Um, oh, I guess a a custom BA could do that today too if they wanted to call shutdown at XC themselves. Um, so anyway, if there's a burn engine that's already elevated, we should use that. If there's not one, one way around of not going through the whole process of starting an elevated engine, which has all that communication that it has to do, could possibly be start the XC or you know launch burn again, saying hey with a run as. It's just a an easier way out. Yeah, the burn. So Jacob, the event logging burn should be setting all the necessary information into the shutdown message. So that it says we're shutting this down for this application for an application update. All those various flags correctly. It should be doing that today. All right. Um, NuGet package. All right. Sorry. Can we move on now? Did I? I get that. Yeah. All right. So six five thirty six four eight six. I think we were waiting for another round. And I, it's been three weeks, so let's stop waiting. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's possible this will get sorted out um, in the new V4 targets, possibly, but I don't know. It's certainly a class of problems that I, I recognize as problematic in well, I mean, the the thing here is that this is packages.config, so I, I... Oh, that one's packages.config? Okay. Never. I'm entirely unclear why this is having any issues, right. hence my request for the logs. You're right. You're right. Um, because, you know, it should work. It's, it's a file. There's no magic. Right. There's none of the often funky new magic that happens around package refs and whatnot. I'm starting to put it pieces together, but yeah. All right. 6509, package upgrade packages to get a major upgrade are planned with rollback uninstall. I don't quite. Oh, and then there's this one. Sean, does this make uh, does this make sense to you? I'm, I'm the original right. one was I think was the one that came from the mailing list. The original We're, one, this this yeah. link. I'm not sure. Six five ten. This is the next issue. Bundle rollback a bundle upgrade breaks dependencies. Yeah, this one was real. Okay. I mean, they're both real. I just I didn't uh, refresh my memory on the mailing list on the other one. Minor upgrades to the packages weren't uninstalled as part of rollback. Okay. Is this more minor upgrade problems? This is 6510 is about the dependency planning is planning the rollback of the, it deletes the dependencies during rollback when it shouldn't. Oh, so it's prematurely removing the dependencies. 
for the 6509, I mean, he had a real issue on the mailing list. I don't, I'd have to refresh my memory about what exactly it was about. The planning, both fresh install, major upgrade are planned as rollback uninstall, regardless of dependencies. Oh, well, okay. Minor upgrades are planned for rollback none, regardless of dependencies. Oh, that's odd. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm, I don't remember. Do do we plan the dependency rollbacks like we plan package rollbacks, where it's like it's a per package operation? Yeah. Okay. So we should be able to plan the right rollback behavior. Yeah. I mean, 6510 is definitely a straight up bug that shouldn't be there. Except I'm wondering if, if it's, it, are we uh, tracking the data that should be rolled back is sometimes really hard to get. I'm wondering if we did the, the right thing there. Cause we're not reinstalled. When we roll back a bundle, we don't automatically repair it. So, well, sorry, if we roll back a new bundle, we don't automatically repair the old one, which presumably would put the dependency information back. Are are we capturing the right dependency state to to roll it back? Or I mean, just... so for sixty five ten, it it's a it's a they the planned package is a minor upgrade. So the plan is install the minor minor upgrade. The rollback action is do nothing. The problem is, is that during rollback, dependency thought that it would be uninstalled, so it planned to delete the dependencies. So yeah, it busted. dependency planning needs to see rollback action was none, so it needs to just not plan anything yep. during rollback. Yep. Yep. Yeah. That is yep. a bug. All right. Well, let's do this one because this one's very straightforwardly a bug. Um. I'm not doing burn bugs right now or in the foreseeable future. So is this going in four or four X and waiting for someone to go dig into it? Four with someone owning it and four X. I don't want to sign up for this right now. Do we put it in four O just to review it when we punt it? <laughs> Cause we're not going to get to it or do we do it now? That's really what it comes down to, I guess whether we're going to have time let's, at some point. Let's put it in 4.0, but not the preview one project. Okay. That's okay. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Again, it means we get, we yep. will have at least one more uh, okay. triage attempt. All right. It, it's, it's high enough that we should at least look at it again is what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 6509, does it get the same then? Are these so, going to be like similar related issues of dependency management not being calculated correctly? This one's a little more tricky. Because you're. Oh, good. <laughs> this is doing a major upgrade. So the package is an MSI. It's installing, but it's like a major upgrade of the package that's already there. So during rollback, the problem is, is that it's uninstalling the package, even though there were dependencies on that package. So like it's this, basic, it's ignoring all the dependencies and you're getting nothing. This, this is the, um, the, I think this is, this is probably already tracked somewhere. This is known, right? This is the, the, yeah. um, you know, a bundle might not be in a good state after a rollback. Um, because of, of packages getting upgraded or removed. The, I, the I, quick answer is, if you repair it, it should go back. I might be not explaining this. I might be missing a nuance here, but basically the problem is, is that burn will schedule the uninstall during rollback even though it didn't take any action on the package during execute. And it ends up uninstalling the package, even though there's dependencies. Oh, 
Okay, that is. It's, the, it's like the flip side of the other thing that you were talking about, Bob. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. You're right. This is trickier. And then the thing is, is if it's a minor upgrade, it avoids this problem because of the weird way we do minor upgrade detection. Because it doesn't try to uninstall the package during rollback. Right, right. If it didn't touch it, it shouldn't roll it back, and that's that. That it, seems it, that seems big and hopefully obvious. That feels like the high order bit. Yeah. I'm surprised that a major upgrades are always planned with rollback uninstall. It's a major upgrade, but it's not installing it, and it's still planned to roll back. Where's the wall? All right. All right. I might. I don't know. I guess I should have. I didn't realize we were going to go in depth on this. Well, oh. if you would just volunteer to fix it, then we wouldn't have to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I remember that this is different than the other bug that has been reported where it's doing a major upgrade and then it's uninstalling it during rollback and then you're in this weird state. Like I feel, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure there's something different here. It's not clear that this is at all concerned about dependencies. Well, I'm also wondering if this is not like, if this is the, in major upgrade, we then remove the major upgraded package and we do so ignoring dependencies because we know that we're going to put you into a broken state, but given all the other alternatives at this point, that's better than um, leaving you at a higher version product, which may not be compatible with the other uh, higher version package that may not be compatible with all the other things in the mix. Mm. And so then we're like, yeah, we violated the dependencies by breaking this because by removing it, you can go and repair the other thing that still has a dependency that is now missing on the machine. And it can go, oh, hey, that's supposed to be here and fix it. And you can get back into a good, st a good state. As opposed to having a higher version that would not get touched Which during it a repair couldn't, of yeah, an older it, bundle. Exactly. The older bundle could not do anything to it because it's not the same package yeah. code and all kinds of things. It's just like, ah, I'm stuck with that thing. I think the answer here is still, yeah, we did this because the alternatives are worse. This feels very similar to that problem that we keep coming. Until we can solve the magical, yeah, we'll go find the old MSI, figure out all of the parameters necessary to install it again and to roll it back, right? or we trust multi-packaged MSI transactions and they work for you enough that that gets us out of this problem too. Um, those are like the, the two solutions. And the first one, being able to install the previous version of an MSI, I'm not sure we can ever get that perfectly right because who knows what parameters it takes to install it. Um, yeah, well, I mean, what we've talked about in the past is automating a repair of that previous right. bundle. If, if this is yeah. an upgrade, yes bundle then we've talked about you know because yeah. we know the we know the, the one that we're going to remove you're right yeah you're right that's an option yes so after reading this actually i don't i don't think there's really a difference here the only difference is they have another bundle that had a dependency on the package yes. that got rolled yes. back so this lines up with my memory of a decision that was made. It's just like, yeah, we're going to break the dependency on this because because of exactly the scenario, right? You have a newer version package. If we don't remove it, you could get trapped in this world where nothing works and you have to go find the command line to tell the user run MSI exec slash X with the product code and then go repair the product. And you're like, oh gosh. And that MSI is going to be forever trapped on the machine. If you're like, oh, the new version doesn't install, that's fine. I'm just going to stay with my old, you know, my current version. Oh, it's broken. Fine. What's this? All right. I have to repair it. Oh, this is all dumb, whatever. But hey, everything's fine now. And then you release the ISV releases a new version of their thing with a new package that doesn't fail. 
and now everything works out where before if if we don't remove this major upgraded package you could get stuck with this thing where you're like oh how did this user get this version that we know is busted in all these ways and it's like oh it's bad um it's very easy to get into very very bad scenarios where as opposed to yeah let's just put in a scenario where repair is going to fix it that that's just kind of the mantra of this design right now um it's the least worst case until we do something like Bob said, well, automat automating the repair step, which essentially is the thing we do anyway. I think that's the answer to this issue. Again. <sighs> so I, I think what I was thinking about this issue was why it was different. I think I was actually looking at it in the sense that this is showing that minor upgrade is uh, behaving differently than major upgrade. Like, I was thinking about taking this bug and making it to where the minor upgrade has the same behavior as the major upgrade. Oh, let's see. That's interesting. It's it's kind of the same problem space, right? Yeah, the difference is at least the minor upgrade can get re removed by the old bundle, right? Does it? I, it'll get detected superseded, so I don't right. really it won't think so. It. Mm. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, it has. It does feel like it has the same problems. I don't know why we would have treated it differently. Well, it's the it's just how it detects the packages. Yeah, I don't know why we would have decided that it's different. No, Why like it's it not a removed? it's not a conscious decision to treat them differently. There's not a if minor upgrade. It's it's a result of how oh, the package oh, oh. is detected. I see. So when you have a minor upgrade, it's detected as present, mm -hmm. even though it's not installed. Right. 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 Yeah. That's uh. Yep. Good. It's an interesting problem. So I think this is probably then, it sounds to me like this is a dupe of the thing, same thing that Bob was talking about before, the known behavior thing. The question is, do we want to open an issue that clearly articulates what Sean's talking about, changing the behavior of minor upgrades? Um, and I'd be okay. I'd also toss out that Maybe we don't change the behavior of minor upgrades until we add the behavior of calling the repair. <laughs> like basically do those together. Like, hey, we now can get you out of the bad state <laughs> automatically. Yeah. It you might just... look bad if we you know, make things worse for the people using minor upgrades. Right. At least given where they are today. Until we kind of come up with the end-to-end -end solution for the whole space. Ah, this is so cool. And multi-MSI transactions still don't work, right? It's just, <laughs> uh, it works sometimes. All right, what do we want to do with this one? Dupe it to the other one. And then, Sean, do you want to open a new issue tracking the minor upgrade change in behavior for future? Yeah, I can do that. Is that the right way through to navigate all these open things on this? Sorry, I'm I'm I lost antecedents. What do we want duplicate, to do? With... Duplicate six uh dupe six five oh nine to the other one that you think exists, Bob. <laughs> ah, that's I was missing that part of go bug spelunk, spelunking. Okay. Seems like we should have that number memorized at this point. Um if we it don't It says the guy who can't remember the four No, no, no. I, from... I, I'm not saying that I should remember. <laughs> oh, this is one of the things that, oh, I, that, the things that I should compensate for by writing it down in the magic place where I write numbers down. Um, sorry. For those of you that just joined us, we had an entire conversation about me not being able to remember anything from you know, a week ago. And I just pulled out my notepad so I could write down that bug hunting suggestion. Yeah, but you're going to put it on today's date, and what good is that? Anyway, yes, I'm 100% behind that, Bob. Sounds great. All right. Wow. I, 
I, I caught your tone there. I, I'm <laughs> the paper, paper, paper. Anyway, I think that's the way out of these, no, these two for now, and then we'll have to. Yeah, these are these, these non-perfect edge cases. Yep. All right, ready to move um, on. So, so I'm sorry. What happened with 6510? That was the move at the 4.0 and we're going to, without preview one, and we're going to let it sit there because we think it's bad oh. enough. And if we have time to breathe, maybe we'll do it, but I'm right. skeptical. Okay. All right. 65.12, MSI generated with high mandatory level when Visual Studio runs as admin. My initial reaction when I read this was, well, yeah. Yeah, I think. It not... means DevEnv is running elevated, so... This is what happens when tools run elevated. They write, and this feels normal. Uh, however, it turns out this does not happen with other projects. It probably has to do with us um, resetting the ACLs. I I wonder if this will be some oh, press, of course. the press ACLs thing. This is fixed in four, and he can try S A C L. If if S A C L works in right, that's to light. If that light switch works, then um, that would part. The other way they could do it then is make sure that they're all these folders down here are set correctly. If other things aren't doing it, I wonder how they're getting around it. Maybe it's also the fact that the, maybe we're our tasks run in process and the other processes run out of proc. Even then, they should be run as uh, I, Yeah, I mean, I guess it's, again, that was kind of my, well, duh, of course, this is how it works. But, you know, we know the Visual Studio launches, a, a, I think the technical term is a boatload of stuff running in the background. Sure. Um, so it's entirely possible that some of those are explicitly, you know, attempted to run unelevated um, for when when that actually works, but I I I I'm pretty confident that your your ACL idea is the right one. We're messing with the ACLs and doing it from an elevated process. Mm -hmm. So, but we're setting it to inherit the parent process. So I don't know the parent tree. So I don't exactly know. But I don't know how far up the tree we're resetting it. So it could be like the release folder gets set funky and. I don't know. Mm. I don't know what's what's going on. I it's like, yeah, okay, fine. They should go deep debug into it a little bit more if they really care. I don't really care that much either in the end. But yeah. But you're saying four is not affected? Because Well if 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 the suppress ACL thing works, then four is not affected because four doesn't do that ACL stuff anymore. Okay. Because it was a we did that ACL reset due to DFS shares and stuff like that. And in the end, it was like, yeah, you know, we probably shouldn't have been the people that did that. And it's just causing weird things. We took on ownership of something that we should have pushed to somebody else. Right. In the end. So. Anyway. Um, unable to build after updating to version 314.411. This is still here. Oh, move Sorry. to discussion. That's great. Yeah. Um, support bundle automatic containering like MSI. Oh, media template for bundle containers. Sure. Uh, could look at this in four. I'd like to see a whip for this. This needs a whip, and we can put oh, it. Oh, this in definitely four. needs a whip. I'm, yep. I'm... Yep. I need. To, we need to see the authoring. So, but this could be the great start of a whip. This is a great issue to start a whip, go do the whip, and then move it forward. So I think we should put that information on here, put it in four, um, and assign it to Nier for now, since he's like, he wants to do this proposal. And if he doesn't, then we will punt it to 4X. So we'll go there. Okay. And this is a four thing, not a three thing. Minor upgrade random leaves old versions in add remove programs. This is another move to conversation. Yes, great. Yep. 
I'm, why is your query showing those? I'm because curious. they must be tagged with triage. Because I labeled it like an hour ago. Oh. Oh, and if I hit refresh, they're gone. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Okay. But also your query looks at closed issues as well. Yes, I do that on purpose in case we triage, we tag closed things mm -hmm. as triage. I, I figured that was safer than that. So. Woo. All right. So real bundle bugs that just keep coming up. That that's the the rollback behavior on major upgrades is like one of the last weak points in burn, I think. Going mentally through my list of things that Sean's already fixed in four. It's like, yeah, it's much better in four. Um, so many things are better for. All right. Moving on. Today, let's discuss searches. Um, for search elements to stay in util, Wix extension, or move into core. All right. So a little bit of background. The, the searches are a little, are, have a, dual world in the way that they're implemented in that they're built into burn engine directly, but they're brought into the compiler namespace via the util Wix extension. And that's always been a little bit weird because it's native functionality of the searches in burn. And so there are a lot of different ways that we could make that cleaner. Um, if we were to add the uh, burn searches into the core language so that, or into the core tool sets language, so move them out of util. Um, but then they collide with the way that the MSI ones are uh, designed because they implement differently and I'd argue better. So we can't just move the searches from util into uh, the main namespace without reconciling what it means for the existing um, elements. But it would clean up a lot of the weirdnesses we have. Um, there has also been a long-standing dream that some point we might take the burn search functionality and implement it as custom actions so that you could get the same better or, um, search functionality inside MSIs that you get in burn and not have to be dependent on all the locator tables, which are mostly sufficient, but can sometimes be really quirky. Um, and so you'd be able to have that. But to do that, of course, we'd have to inject custom actions into uh, the MSI. And we don't tend to do, we don't add custom actions historically, I'm gonna say that, historically, we've not added custom actions to your MSI um, unless it came from an extension. We only added custom actions to your MSI if they came from an extension, basically saying this is an extension, therefore it had to add, extend the one as installer, so it had to add, possibly add custom actions to do its job. Um, I don't know how First, many people. Then we brought in software tag and dependencies, which do not add custom actions, but are also in that, you know, extending the MSI world. Space. Right. Right, so we brought them, so we did bring the uh, software tag as an interesting example where we brought, it used to be an extension, we brought it into native, and it, and software tag had the same world where it was natively implemented in the burn engine, because it had to be to be implemented, but there's nothing natively in the Windows installer that had it, but the functionality all used native Windows installer functionality because it was just right. installing files, so hey, we could use that, we just did it in a particular pattern inside behind the scenes. And in four, rather than have an extension to manage that, we brought it into the core language and said, yes, we are going above and beyond what MSI has natively for tagging, but we're only using MSI native functionality. So it's okay in the justification. Um, dependency is a little more complicated because there is a custom action necessary to get its full functionality. And I fuzzy on the details of this because it was a while ago, but it was mostly around showing UI messages, um, error messages, I think, detecting yeah. that this is okay and ignoring it, letting it go through. 
it's it's a this if you uninstall this you you might break four other products do you want to continue right and so that you would need a extension to bring that ui back accessor and code to populate the ui well that, um, that's what that's what we did yeah right, that's what we four. did right. okay that's what we did in four is that you have to you have to in, add the dependency extension to have these um this additional ui show up in the msi the thinking being that well, we can store all the dependency information in MSI. That has a lot of value in storing it in MSI to automatically be included in bundles. And if bundles are where most of the dependency management on MSIs is done, and MSIs aren't generally visible when they're operating within a whole bunch of dependencies, then that UI maybe can be secondary to the value that just having dependencies available in the language gives you. So we made the decision to split that the other way so that the you bring in this extension to bring in the UI, but hey, having dependencies around otherwise is a good thing. And the language now has dependencies as part of it. Well, I mean, technically it's not just UI, it's the actual block. And the block, you're and the block. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. It, and the actual block. Um, and uh, the hedge there is that, well, burn will take care of most of that for you. So if you're using dependencies in the case of burn, it's all handled for you. If you're shipping an MSI naked and using dependencies, then you need to bring an extension to add the block to the MSI itself. Absolutely true. So with searches, there were a couple ways that I remember that we could have gone with it. Um, and we, well, we didn't decide. And so Sean brought this up as, hey, what are we going to do here? Um, so let me go back and I'm going to bring up a couple of the options that we can consider for handling searches um, if they were a native part of the language. So namely the burn searches coming in as a native part of the language. Um, and so, it, so one idea to do that was if the searches come in, as I mentioned before, we already have things called registry search in the language, but they're purely the MSI behavior. Um, so if we're bringing registry search, there would be a collision in elements, which technically speaking, we can um, disambiguate by their parent. No, that's not true because of fragments. So that, uh, that didn't work. So we have to disambiguate them. One way to disambiguate them would be to go and say, all right, we are going to reclaim the name registry search and component search and so on for the burn behavior. And we're going to go back to and we're going to rename the existing search um, elements to a locator because that's what MSI calls them. So we don't have to call them reg locator or doctor locator. We could call them directory locator and registry locator. But if we use locator as the element names, then we could say those define the MSI built in. Registry search are the burn built in versions. And if you want to use the registry search in MSI, then include the util Wix extension or the search Wix extension or an extension to get those custom actions added to your MSI. Similar to what we do for the dependency stuff, you add, you have to add a um, extension to get the full behavior if you want it purely to use it purely inside MSI. That's so kind of one way to go. For, so in that scenario, you could use registry search in an MSI package and it would fail to link. Correct. We would, have, we, would need to do, we would need to do something such that it failed to link. Okay. Yeah, that would be a feature inside the tools. To say, hey, you're going to need this thing out there, which is a little bit weird. We don't do that anywhere else today where we create, we know you're yeah. going to fail unless you provide an extension. Um, but it's, um, it could set a new precedent that we will do that sometimes, that we can enhance the core language of Wix beyond what the Windows installer has and backfill the Windows installer by adding custom actions. So if you use this feature, you're going to get a link time failure that says, hey, you need to use this extension. Just add the extension and you're off the races. I don't know that most users would ever care. They'd be like, oh, right, I forgot to add the search extension because I'm using the search feature carry on. I'm not sure how many people are going to hold us to the architectural purity of, well, if I get a custom action, it better come in a separate namespace. I don't know how many people care. Um, so I, I don't I don't know that anyone would care about that except maybe four people on the planet. <laughs> but, but And they're all on this call. People, <laughs> <laughs> that, that's kind of where I was going. Um, 
but I, I guess I'm I'm I haven't I haven't really heard the big benefits of moving them into the into the the core namespace. Um, well, you have to reference the util extension when, when you're building a bundle worker. if you want to do searches. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It, it, it's the other way around. It's the I want. I just want to use. Almost every bundle needs searches, and uh, today that means you almost always need an extension when building your bundle because that's where the definitions for native functionality of burn live. It's like you need this extension, but it's actually built into burn. Um, and given that people don't generally complain about it outside of you know the core of us kind of things, it's not been that big a deal. Like we don't see people going, "Why do I have to do this?" Because the templates already do it for you. Yeah, probably. That's that's a good point. And or you know you search on the internet and they're like, "When you hit this, you need that." Like, okay, done. <laughs> and that's it. It's right. They don't even. There's no next layer of thinking of like, "Why was it done that way?" Or there is, and they just you know don't bother go searching the people the, to ask, the, the which is totally the valid template. too. The, the current votive template adds util and ball automatically. I think so. Um, but it does create weirdnesses in the, it's a little bit weird in the compiler. We have references to things that aren't in the core tool set elsewhere. It creates weird things inside the tooling um, that would be nicer if they were straightened up. The tagging was one another example where things got much simpler when I just accepted that, you know, we're going to bring tags into the native thing. A lot of that just got easier inside the compiler. Purely internal mechanics got easier to deal with, um, cleaner to deal with. So it was worth it at that time. So I, I expect the similar would happen for the searches if we find a good way to navigate the MSI collisions, which tag did not have. And dependency did not have because they were always purely extension and things. Never was there a native functionality. So, so Sean, it sounds like there's a bunch of little issues that would that might make it worthwhile. Yeah, and and it's 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 almost all like this is all us, right? I don't I don't hear any users screaming for this. This is most this is just us kind of cleaning up our backyards. What it feels like. Okay. Um, all right. And, and and I'm for that. Sean, do you have a strong opinion on which way to go with this? No, I was no. just okay. wanting like a path forward for if someone wants to add or, you know, refactor the searches so that you can use an MSI, they'll know how to do it. Refactor the MSI. Well, like the implementation of the searches are in burn right now. Right. So someone wants those in custom actions. Oh, how would you go about getting them out and all that? Yeah. <laughs> Copy the code, start, and then refactor from there. But yes, um, yes, yes, yes. Um, I, for part of me, that's it. For for me, I I. It feels weird to do this, um, just for, you know. I don't know. It, it seems it seems to have minor reasons to make a fairly visible change. Um, if there were something more like, oh yeah, and we're you know implementing the 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 MSI side of things, then uh, okay, maybe that's I don't know, mildly more more of a reason. Yeah. Um, so, but I, I, I'm more because I deal with the internals of the compiler. I'm more for this thing. But it didn't make preview zero, which is why I'm kind of like, yeah, I would like to do this, but I think it goes to five. It's just one of those, like, I just didn't get done in time. And I think it's just like, this is what we have for four, which is the same as what we had for three. And we come back in five when we change the language again. Can change the language again. I think that's what's, I think that's where I'm at with this issue. Um, and if this was the thing we were discussing you know, six months ago, five months ago, even, you know, and it was the only one and there wasn't a huge other smash of things. I've been like, yeah, you know, I really want to look at this and see if I can make this happen, but I just don't think it's going to fit in four at this. I don't think it should go into four now because it didn't make preview zero. It's a big enough change. And 
that makes it a five thing. I, mean, I guess um, I guess it yeah. bothered me that like it's not it's not pure. So you have the yeah. elements and the util compiler, but the implementation and burn. I 100% agree with you. 100% so, agree with you. To, like, there was like two options to make it pure, like we talked about moving into core, and the other option was moving the implementation out of the burn core into the util burn extension. Yep. But it's too mm. important to burn. <laughs> I, 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 so I, I agree those are two options. Uh, I, I think it's so important to burn that pulling it out as an extension feels like let's take something really important and put more layers of failure into it. Doesn't it, more more moving parts for something so important to burn. I don't think that's the right way for us to go. That's why I think we should push it down to the language. Yeah, burn need. I, I agree. That's yeah. Jacob says. I, I think burn needs it. So pulling it out. I think. For purity's sake, I think that's the wrong way to do it. I think we should do it the other way around. For purity's sake, bring it in, not pull it out. Um, it's kind of the way I was leaning as well. And I agree on all fronts, but I think we're, this is like, we are where we're on for, I don't, I, and then I agree with Bob. It's like, yeah, but it's not big enough to do all the change at this point. So I'm worried about the language churn. Yeah. I. I I, that, I, that would be that's my only vote against is that you know it it we would almost well sorry I guess I'm assuming we would do the reg locator you know the locator search swap um, as the most logical naming and and, and there may be an a better solution the there may be a better solution than that one that I propose but bringing I think bringing it more more native is better than pulling core functionality out of burn. Um, so I think we should go that more that route. If, you know, there may be a better way of naming things than what I proposed here because I haven't thought about it deeply. But yes, I think that's the way to go because it is native functionality burn. So yes, there's that, and then there's the, but it's probably just not worth it in four. It's just kind of where it's at. So we'll just leave. We'll have one more uh, impurity for us to tackle in five. Essentially, that if we get there, like you know, this is let's let's go fix the search thing now. I think that's probably. That's just where I'm feeling it right now. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense to me. So, not yeah. a, yay, let's it's just, uh, that's, that's where we're at. <laughs> uh, uh, resigned is what it is. All right, we are, we are resigned uh, to the state of it. I think we understand it pretty well. Um, it's working right now, so we're going to go with that in four. And it will come back in five. All right, where are we at? 10.25. Let's go see if we can get, at least we can clean up this one page of old issues because we're actually on a halfway page, as I remember it. Because um, we are on, if I wrote it down as 55, 58, 50, let's switch. All right, let's look at the issues. Right, all right, right. What right number there? are we starting at? Uh, fifty-six eighty-five. I was like, I was looking for. I knew it's eighty-five. Fifty-six eighty-five is where we left off. So we're starting at fifty-seven oh five. That was what I got out of all my notes. Okay. Okay. So fifty-seven oh five. Unable to build when referencing multi-target project. Yes, that is a new MSI build problem that is tagged correctly and assigned to me. Great. Uh, 5726, unable to Does cast... Does this go into Preview 1? Oh, yes, yes. Where is it? Preview 1 doesn't show up here. Does it? Okay. Yeah, it's not showing up in this, this higher level view. Okay, yes, definitely Preview 1. Yep. Um, it's just one of those things that gets straightened out in all the MS build work I'm doing. All right, unable to cast transparent proxy to type... This is votive. Oh yeah, that's be. Be. Yeah, so we talked about kicking Votive out to its own world, its own release timeline, right? Right, milestone. Yeah. So that should go there. Um, add options to suppress hard linking. I don't really want to do this. <laughs> I don't want to add an option to suppress hard linking. Leave it in preview one. I'm going to look at because I don't remember off the top of my head where I ended up with all the the 
extension work in here. And let me make sure that this is still right. And I will probably close this with whatever the implementation is in for. So let's leave it. I, I, I don't think I'm going to do a whole lot more work there. I'm just going to write it down and say, here's what you get. Um, local user created by MSI package is absent after major upgrade if removing system is placed after install initialized. So this is a custom action improvement. Yeah, util. Um, this is, I think, the, the uh, commit problem. Yes, it is. Oh, yep. I, wow. That last comment there was really smart. Yep. Um, so Ron just did a user custom action thing and got deeper into it. I wonder if you'd be interested in this one. I don't know how hard that is to get there. I don't know. It's, it's kind of the advanced, it's like the most advanced thing you can do in a custom action is to get it to run as a commit custom action and get data passed to it, right? Um, Okay, um, what do we do with this one? Should we ask him if he'd be interested? And if not, then it probably won't fit, I'm assuming. I can tag him in it. Yeah. Sean, I'm assuming you don't want to jump on this. No. <laughs> yep, that was, that was prompt. Yep. All right, Wix 311 standard BA string capitalization is assigned to Bob, so I assume you're going to uh, another one of these um, standardization things. This, okay, this one is at least a little this is Wix standard BA, so yeah. um, it's a little smaller in scope. Um, Yeah, uh, okay. I'll take it in preview one. Wix At least for investigation. To be clear, this this is problematic because of the localizations that we have. I don't um, but this is actually in, in the big theme, so I will take it at least for investigation. Yeah, all right. But Wix toolset does not install into the Microsoft Build Tools 2017 folder. Yeah, that's true. We don't. We can't. Okay, none of this is a problem. None of this is the same. All right, this is, yeah, this is signed to me, preview one. This bug just goes away whenever I get all the MS build stuff working because we don't do it at all this way anymore. It's all SDK style projects. I think it was the documentation thing. Oh, that too? Oh, yeah, Mark's documentation. Well, yes, I will sort it all out. Wix quiet exec incorrectly, uh, sorry, 5818. Wix quiet exec incorrectly assumes Unicode output encoding of the first byte read as a single byte. Oh, uh, uh, <laughs> I do not like console encoding issues. <laughs> is, is is there not a way we can prepare the console? Can we can we force a console co code page? I don't know. When we create the process. Yeah. This is an interesting point. That you know, don't try to make your guesstimate based off of one byte. Wait oh, until there's yeah, at least two fair. bytes. Um, are we doing this in four? I mean, it's a bug. Someone could do it. I think that's what this is really waiting for. Someone to step up and say, yeah, I'll fix that. I think it's more someone's waiting to not want to do the testing. Well, I mean, testing is certainly a large part of it. I, I'm not entirely sure how you reproduce this. Mm, this console program, I think, will do it. It ends up giving you this. Mm -hmm. 
well, yeah, in a yeah, all right, I'll take it. I'll look I'm at not it. saying you should. I'm just saying someone needs to take it. If someone if no, it's it's I, I okay. Someone should look at it. I will volunteer. Okay. Obviously, I'm not enthusiastic about it. But. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, it's not the first time. <laughs> Ele- uh, 5830, elevated bundle layout generates files without user permissions. Yeah, it's going to generate with the permissions of the user that ran the, el- the layout command. Um, this is this a- broken by CleanRoom, or Maybe. was this broken before? I don't. Yeah, 57, move to Windows temp. Yeah, when the bundle's elevated. Yeah, it's probably CleanRoom. Not- I'll take it then. OK. Preview one, um, 5856, unable to launch bundle elevated if access to Windows Tempter is limited by SRP, right? This is the idea of we can't write the temp, go write to program files folder or something else that is correctly ACLED or should be correctly ACLED. Yeah, I'm working on it. Oh, right, it's already signed, Sean. All right, let's put that in group, whatever, um, project uh, preview one. It's already there? Already there? Oh, thanks. Uh, Sean's, of course, on top of it. All right. Wix for errors in MS build aren't zero padded. No, I actually was looking at this. Okay. It's trivial to fix it, but um, it turns out it might not be the um, thing to do anymore. Um, I noticed both C and C sharp now have five digit numbers. <laughs> so they're kind of, I think, backing away from this. So, okay. um, so I will send it I away. will close this. Great. Yep. Wix four throws odd error when using the equivalent operator in I assume it's the preprocessor. Yes. Okay. If you accidentally if you forget that yep. the preprocessor uses a single equals for equality, then you might be tempted to use equal equal the way you know God intended, and it and turns out a very bad error message. Get a very bad error yeah. message. I, I'll take it. Put it in preview one. It'll, it's just one of those things. Unless okay. Ron comes along and wants to do more preprocessor work. I think he was doing that. Well, actually, you already took it. So. I did. Sorry. Oh, put it in preview one. Right. Yep. Um, setting to enforce different reinstall flag rather than. <laughs> this is what we discussed last 5911. Week. Yes. So, and it's already there. Yep. All right. Okay. I need to go back. 5911. All right, we're going to finish this page. My thinking here. Extensions should version their IDs. This is already in. No, this should already be in. This needs to be in preview one. It is. Yep. All right. Cancel XC doesn't roll back the package. This is assigned to Bob. This is a design discussion, actually. Okay. So I should add it to my list. Yeah, we. It was on the list, and I said it wasn't a big deal, and then it disappeared from the list. Oh, I, 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 I took big deal as resolved, but not <laughs> wrong thing. Okay, low priority, <laughs> not doesn't need to be discussed. Got it. I will put it back on the list. <laughs> um, default dialog background doesn't respect high contrast colors. Oh. Oh. Oh, that. Okay. Yeah. Specify your own bitmap. Partially transparent. Hold that. Ugh. Okay. M- Wix MSI UI is so out of date. <laughs> Hard to manage. Um, I'm f- I'm curious. Uh, You're curious enough to look at it more. Oh, well, I don't want to go that far. Um, okay, so the big problem is I don't I don't want to make sweeping changes. Um in mm-hmm. I don't mm-hmm. I don't want to make changes that are going to affect uh one loc and two customization. Mm-hmm. Um because we have no good way of of communicating those. Mm-hmm. You know, we yep. can't, you know, we, we don't have the, 
we don't have a translator, you know, on staff, and yep. uh, so I'm, I'm, you know, very nervous about changing those things. Um, changing the the way the, that the images in Wix UI work. Also, it's like, yeah, we, yeah, we can't, um, we can't detect them. Yeah, this isn't something you can deal with in Wix Cop. Um, so, frankly, the only thing I would consider, just for myself, that I would consider for myself, is creating a new dialogue set, like we tried to do with with he, Wix UI Advanced. He's saying that if you created it with a transparent bit, that would work. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Not sure that's I'm, maybe, maybe, and then we got to go test it on Windows Seven, Windows Eight, you know, blah blah blah. A lot of this comes, uh, a lot of this goes way, way back. Yeah. About, um, you know, we need to. What we should have done and didn't do from Wix 2.0 to Wix 3.0 was put more smarts. In the extension, yep. Right. If if this were if Wix UI were handled more with a compiler extension than you know the way we did it in Wix two, well then we'd probably be better off now. Um, but you know now is mm -hmm. many years later, and I'm only interested. I'm not very interested at all in MSI UI, and making these big changes is just you know, right. Not right. Really. So, so what the I transparency past, doesn't work on Win Seven. Oh yeah, okay. It doesn't work with Win Seven. I think yes. that right. the yes, okay, the experience. Yes. Yep. Win seven. Even though it should work on Windows Seven, it doesn't. Okay. So I don't know if that's an MSI failing to light up correctly or or what. Yep. Um. Yeah. All right. So we're not doing this in four. We put it in five, and we can take transparency in five because probably by the time five rolls around, seven's gone. I don't know. I'm throwing that out willy nilly, but and then that's the simplest solution. And in the meantime, the correct answer is yeah, just put your own dialog there. I totally understand if you don't want to use ours. In fact, yeah, I'm really surprised more people use ours because ours was designed to be um, garish and not. Um, completely appealing, right? It was it was honestly used to make it very clear that we were not the same as everybody else because everybody else, when this was designed, used blue. Uh, early 2000s, used blue. <laughs> so we went yep. red. And this is the standard MSI UI sample, blue, redone in red. And that's all it is. I remember MS painting it. So, all right. I think this doesn't make four, and we can come back to all that in five. Assuming the side UI still exists in five. Not that we're going to get rid of it, but for those. Well, again, that's you know my interest now is like, yeah, what if we just made, if we made you know something like the the AppX installer thing, where it's just it's very simple. You have a little bit of branding. You don't have you know full any customization. Graphics. Yeah, right. Well, we we can make it customizable, but oh, okay. without you know, again, the, with this far also, fewer of images with, and smaller images, so mm -hmm. that we also solve the problem of the non-transparent checkbox. Right, 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 right. That's pr my primary motivation. Yes, that actually. one too. Yeah, that one is not fun either. Yep. Yeah. All right. So, but I still think this goes to five. Agreed. Great. So if we put that in five, then I was trying to get it so I could re. Wait, if we keep doing this. So what do I need? So that one's going to leave, right, Bob? Yes. So if I go to the next page before you finish that, do I get the right one? All right. All right. Default service install vital attributes not documented. Okay. Wow, there's a lot of discussion about this. Oh, I see. And document about values absent. All right. So I think that's the last one. 
that, that's a straightforward doc thing that could be done at any point. Wait, is that assigned? No, just give that to me. Ah, I'm not signed in. You can give um, give 5974 to me. Okay. And I'll roll it up instead of another pass of all my doc changes that I'm making. That'll be very straightforward. Okay. Um, just trying to get to it. All right. I'm trying to get it so we end up on a page break. Because that would be very easy to remember. Did you already move that other one, Bob? It yes. is. There we go. Great. Great. So now that means we are leaving off on 59.94. And just like last week, I get to add an issue to the uh, <laughs> to the discussion items, and I will write down where we left off. And this time, I will try to remember where I wrote it down, which was the problem from before. Okay. So. That leaves us with uh, one, two, three pages, and the last page is short. So another 25, hopefully, next week, in two weeks, that is, and then we will um, have another one after that, and yeah, it's going to work out pretty well. I think that'll work out pretty well. The timing of that, if we keep rolling as we have, will be okay. Going back, questions and comments. So Jacob actually asked a question up front about fixing deutils Beutil API to use the self-allocating strings as opposed to a pointer and a char count. Um, Sean, do you have any? That's kind of more your I world. thought I did it already. Oh. Mm OK. Uh, so like, did you add add alternates? Yeah. Oh. Oh, you didn't have to do that. I mean, I mean, I, I merged Jacob's pull request, and then I changed Beutil a little bit. And then right. Bob said I wanted fixed buffers, so I added fixed buffers and All should right. be good to go. All right, Jacob, does that answer your question? <laughs> As is often the case, Sean is already ahead of the whole thing. And and above and beyond, because that was just a hey it because I said, Oh yeah, but now people can't use like, you know, I don't know, Delphi from from butyl, and you correctly pointed out, you're already it's already deutyl, so as in a static library, so you already need interop with C++. So the allocated strings would be fine. All right. So on three, thanks, Sean. One, two, three. Thanks, Sean. Thanks, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll get Jacob about you know five seconds later. He'll put the same thing in chat. <laughs> thanks. Um, all right. Uh, Okay, great. Uh, anything else going on in your world, Jacob? Um, while he thinks about that, um, I think we have two weeks will be um, August 5th. That seems like a normal date. I don't think anything's unusual will prevent our meeting at that point. Um, doo -doo. And we will pick up on these issues, 5994 in two weeks. That's essentially what we're going to be doing. All right, I don't see anything more from Sean or from Jacob. And Sean, you don't have anything else? Bob, you have anything else? Nope. 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 All right. Uh, we're going to call it a meeting. We'll be back in two weeks. We will do the exact same thing we did today. We will attempt to take over the world, Pinky. Until then, you guys take it easy. See you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.